The following program was sponsored by friends and partners of the Lift Up Jesus Ministry. You were spiritually called and spiritually saved and supernaturally redeemed and supernaturally justified. And we gather here today as a sanctified bride and we worship a living God and we're waiting for his glorious return. And when he returns, we're gonna be raptured up and we will go and live with him forever and ever and ever and ever. Welcome to Lift Up Jesus. I'm Pastor Dudley Rutherford, Senior Pastor of Shepherd Church in Los Angeles. I'm so glad that you've chosen to tune into our program. In today's message titled, The Bride of Jesus, we look at how the church is not merely a building, but it's a gathering of people who belong to Jesus. We're not ordinary people, but a divine entity that has been supernaturally created and redeemed by God. We are the bride of Christ. And as we meditate on this reality, it's essential to grasp that Jesus himself is the groom and we, the church, are his beloved bride. I can't wait to dive deeper into our lesson, so grab your Bible, a pen, something to take notes with, and let's get started. It says that every day, they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and together with glad and sincere hearts. Verse 47, praising God and enjoying the favor of, of the people. The Bible says the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. The church is the bride of Christ. It's made up of people who belong to Jesus because he was the one who saved you. He was the one who called you. He was the one who forgave you. He's the one who loved you. He's the one who redeems you. He's the one that put you in his family. And so we assemble ourselves together and we devote ourselves to the studying of God's word. We devote ourselves to truly caring for our brothers and our sisters. And at this church, we have devoted ourselves to every week taking communion, reflecting back to what Jesus did on the cross so we'll never forget uh, about his grace and his mercy. And we have devoted ourselves to praying for one another. And if we are a church today, like they were a church back there in the New Testament, guess what? God's gonna add to our number daily as well. And number three, the third thing in these sermon notes, the church is the place where we use our gifts to serve the body of Christ. God not only put you in this gathering, everyone here has a role. You have a task. You have a purpose. You have a calling. You have a job. The Bible says in the book of Romans, I want to read this to you, Go over, if you have your Bibles, to Romans chapter 12. This is what happens when you gather together. It says, uh, verse 4, Just as each of you has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we who are many form one body. I know there's a lot of people here, but we're just one body. And each member belongs to all the others. Verse 6, We have different gifts according to the grace that's been given to us. If a man's gift is prophesying, then let him use it in proportion to his faith. If a man has a gift to serve, then let him serve. If a person has a gift to teach, then let him teach. If you have the gift of encouraging, then let them encourage. If you have the gift of contributing to the needs of others, then let him give generously. If you have the gift of leadership, then let him govern diligently. If you have the gift of showing mercy, then let him do so cheerfully. And that's, that's how it works. God brings us all here together for the purpose of serving one another. And then down in Ephesians chapter uh, 4, and, and you can read in the entire book of Ephesians, it talks about that one, when we get in there and we serve, that that's how we grow. That's how we mature. That's how we 
are shaped into being more like Jesus Christ. There's always people who just stay at home and say, well, I just stay home. And I'm not like I'm, me and my wife, we're in our, I want to say underwear, but I'll say ropes. <laughs> and we just sit around and we turn, tune you in and we're watch, we just watch you. And that, that's our church. No, that's not your church. You're just skipping church is what you're doing. Uh, and I don't mind if you want to stay home in your underwear and have church. That's fine with me. As long as you're intent on being the church and you're devoted to the teaching of God's Word and you're devoted to fellowship and breaking bread and to pray. But the, there's only one problem with that, and that is next Sunday there's going to be four of you in that house. And the next Sunday there's going to be eight people in your house and then 12, and then 20. And then you're going to have to knock down that wall there so you can have more room for the 30 people that are going to gather at your house. And then you're going to have 50, then you're going to have 60, then you're going to have 100. You have to build out the backyard. Most of the large churches in the United States of America, guess where they started? They started in somebody's house. So I got no problem you having church in your house as long as you're intent on being the church. If you don't want to come and worship and gather together with other people and you'd rather just stay home because you just want to say you went to church, then, then that's what's wrong. Did, did, am I making sense to everybody? Yes. Now, uh, I, I want to use uh, an illustration that I used literally over 20 years ago. I haven't done it for 20 years, but I'm going to do it. I, I did it last night, then I'm going to do it again today to illustrate that when you walk in here, you should have brought whatever gift or talent you have, and the purpose of that is to serve the body of Christ. That's why we're here. I need to ask, is there anyone here today who's never been, this is your first time to ever be at Shepherd Church. This is your first time ever. Is there anybody? There's one here, guy there. Who else? Right there, right there. Okay. Late, yeah, this girl right here, is this your first time here? I saw a hand over here. What's your name? Isabella, come here. <laughs> Isabella, come up those steps. Act like you're in the LA Marathon. Run up those steps over there. How are you doing? Nervous. Are you nervous? Yeah. Okay. So this is your first time to ever be here? Yes. And who invited you? My beautiful family over there. Your beautiful family. You want to introduce them? Yeah, that's my aunt. Your aunt, uh, your aunt? My cousin, my younger cousin, Nicholas, and my grandmother. And so, hello, brother. You've never been here. I've never been here. And what do you think so far? I think it's incredible. My first time in church for seven years. <laughs> Isabella, come up here. Okay. So, Isabella represents people who've never, they've not, imagine, you've, some of you have been here a hundred times. Never been in here before. First time she's been to church in seven years. Now, here's what normal, normally happens. A first-time visitor walks in here with her arms crossed. <laughs> Cross your arms. There you go. And here's what, here's what she's thinking, okay? First of all, she's looking around at all of you. And she's thinking to herself, I wonder... I wonder if anyone's judging me. <laughs> Just repeat after me, okay? <laughs> if anything, they're judging me, not you, okay? Okay, I wonder. I wonder. What these people. What these people. <laughs> have to offer have to offer me me very good <laughs> so say all that in one sentence I wonder what all these people have to offer to me <laughs> now stay like that I want all of you to cross your arms just like Isabella I want you to repeat after me I wonder, I wonder what this girl, what this girl Isabella never been to church in seven years, church in seven years. Has, to has to offer me. me. Okay, you say your line first. Okay, arms crossed, arms crossed. Say your line again. I wonder what these people have to offer to me.
And at that moment, at that moment, Isabella gets nothing. However, Isabella walks in here with her arms out like this. I wonder. I wonder. What gifts I have. What gifts I have. That I can use. That I can use. To help. To help. Bless. Bless. These. These. Beautiful. Beautiful. Wonderful. Wonderful. Kind. Kind. Encouraging. Encouraging. Lovely. Lovely. People. People. Keep your arms out. Put your arms out towards Isabella. Repeat after these words, I wonder, I wonder what, I have, what I have, what gifts I have, gifts I have what, talents I have, what talents I have, and how I can use those gifts to bless yes. this wonderful, beautiful, beautiful kind, kind, gorgeous, gorgeous lady, lady named Isabella. Name Isabella. And at that moment, she has 3,000 friends who are here just trying to help her. God bless you. You go be seated. Go be seated. Thank you. That poor girl will never come back to church. My prediction, another seven years before we see her. Isabella, thanks for being a good sport. And when she leaves here today, if you see her, you ask her if she needs anything. Church has more to do with the worship we have to offer than anything that we expect to receive. You should never walk in here, and I know, you, I know when you leave here, you have roast preacher for lunch. I know that. You should never leave here wondering, what did I get out of church today? Instead, you should ask yourself, what did God receive today by me being here? Number four in your notes, we're going to wrap this sermon up. I want you to understand the church is a divine entity. Everybody say divine. And stay with me. You have to get this point. The church is a divine entity entity I want you to look around because you all look like you look like normal people to me I want you to turn to your neighbor and say you look normal to me I want you to say back these words for the most part I know you look normal, but you are not normal. <laughs> and here's why. Here's why. This is a divine entity. Those of you that are here today, you are a group of people that used to be spiritually blind and eternally lost. But you were created supernaturally by a supernatural God. The Bible tells us that the creator of the universe, the one who spoke the world into existence, also created you, and he, knit, he knitted together every molecule in your body. God in heaven knit you together inside your mother's womb. God in heaven knew your name before your parents knew of your existence. And the Bible says that before you were ever born, that all the days of your life were already written down. And one day there's a God up in heaven, our Heavenly Father, supernaturally sent His one and only Son into this world. And His Son, according to the Word of God, was not a normal birth. He was born of a virgin. And then He lived a sinless life. And then He went to the cross and in one sacrificial act, Jesus died for every sin that you and I would ever commit. They took him off the cross, and they buried him, and they put him in a tomb where his body decayed for three days. And at the end of that three days, on the third day, God breathed life into that tomb. We'll talk about this in two weeks. 
And the people that are only here once a year will get to hear it again. But on that third day, Jesus supernaturally uh, arose from that grave. And then there was a certain day for every one of us. For me, I was eight years of age when God called me. He called me when I wasn't even paying attention. He called me to put my faith in him. And the day that I said yes to God's son, and the day that you said yes to God calling, supernaturally God forgave you. He placed this Holy Spirit within you. You are not normal people here today. We have God in spirit form living within us. He redeemed us. He set us free from sin and death. And the only reason why we're here is because of Matthew 16, 18, when Jesus said, I will build my church. And when you walked in here today, you didn't walk into a building, no. You were spiritually called and spiritually saved and supernaturally redeemed and supernaturally justified. And we gather here today as a sanctified bride and we worship a living God and we're waiting for his glorious return. And when he returns, we're going to be raptured up and we will go and live with him forever and ever and ever and ever. I sat down one time, just, just had, took a piece of paper, and I just said, I, I just want to write down all the reasons why people should go to church. Why, why should you be here? Not once a month, but every week. And I came up with 20 reasons. I'm going to give them to you. Do not write them down. Because I'm going to go through them as fast as I can. You're not going to have time to write them down. You might get two. Don't write them down. We'll provide it this week on social media, okay? So you just go to one of the social media sites uh, for our church or on Instagram, and, and you'll, you'll see. I'm going to put all 20 of them there, okay? Are you with me on that? I just want you to see the screen. Let me give you 20 reasons why you should be here, and then we're going to stand, and we're going to read a scripture from the book of Revelation together, okay? Here's why you should be here. Number one on my list is because God is here. There's no other reason that's needed other than that. Number two, this is the place where we learn God's word. What is that worth to you? Number three, you should be in church because the Bible commands you to be here according to Hebrews 10, 25. We read that earlier. And number four, salvation is available and recommended. Number five, this is the place where you will discover God's perfect plan for your life. What is that worth to know what God's plan is for your life? I'll tell you what it's worth. It's priceless. Number six, communion is served here each and every week in obedience to Christ's command. Number seven, it's a place where you can use your God-given gifts. Number eight, it's a place to reinforce godly principles in your children's lives. What is that worth to you? Number nine, it's a place that prepares you for worshiping up in heaven so when you get up there, you know what you're doing. <laughs> Number 10, Attending church is investing your life in things that are eternal. Number 11, it's a place that helps you resist all kinds of temptations. I mean, it's hard to sin in church. I mean, you can sin in here, but it's just hard to. Just stay here. It helps you overcome temptation. Number 12, it's a place that keeps your heart soft and pliable to the things of God. Number 13, it's where you're held accountable in your walk with God. Number 14, it's a place that bonds your family together. Number 15, it's what keeps your marriage intact. Number 16, it's a place that feeds your soul. Number 17, a place where you actually sense God's spirit moving. Number 18, a place where you get to see people being baptized. It's a spiritual maternity ward is what this place is. Number 19, just look around. It's a place that unites us. Look at all the different people in here. It's a place that unites us. And number 20, it's a place that Jesus is coming to receive his bride. And any of those reasons alone is why you should be here. Now, I want you to stand. We're going to read Revelation chapter 7, and then we'll be dismissed. Everybody say, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. We're going to start with verse 9, and we're going to read all the way to the end. Everything we do here, is preparing the bride 
for that moment when Jesus comes to get us, the groom, and takes us to our heavenly home. You say, well, what's it going to be like up there? Well, right after Easter, we're going to do a whole series on the afterlife. But this whole chapter tells you what heaven's going to be like. And as the youth minister told me one day, Isabella, <laughs> if you don't like going to church, you're probably not going to like going to heaven. Because as you read through this, not only will you see Shepherd Church, you're going to see the church in heaven. And you'll see how they're related. Are you with me? Yeah. Starting with verse 9, read it out loud with me, if you will. After this, I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count. From every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. And they were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell down on their faces before the throne and they worshiped God saying, Amen, praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. And then one of the elders asked me, these in white robes, who are they and where did they come from? Well, I answered, sir, you know. And he said, these are they who have come out of the great tribulation. And they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and they serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will spread his tent over them, and never again will they hunger, and never again will they thirst. And the sun will not beat upon them, nor any scorching heat. And for the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will lead them to springs of living water and God will wipe every tear from their eyes. As we conclude the program today, may we be committed to being active participants in the body of Christ, using our gifts to serve others and eagerly anticipating the day when we'll stand before the throne of God united as his bride, worshiping him for all of eternity. God bless you and thank you for joining us here at Lift Up Jesus. If you'd like to partner with our ministry, either through prayer or financial giving, please call the number on that screen below or visit our website at liftupjesus.com. Our mission is to lift up Christ that the entire world might believe. We would be honored if you would join us in this mission. We can do this together. Thank you again for watching and please tune in next week. And in the meantime, whatever you're doing and wherever you're going, don't forget to always lift up Jesus. But when you start to see these signs and they're all lined up, he says, these are the beginning of the birth pains social and natural disasters, famine and disease and pestilences and earthquakes, and not just in one place, but in various places. Hey, you better wake up. Jesus is not just great. Jesus is God. He's God in flesh. He's God incarnate. He's God revealed. He's God's final revelation. He's God's exact representation. You're going through a tough time. The Bible says, even though you don't understand it at the time, that God's ways are higher than our ways. God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. You can try all you want to figure it out. You just need to learn to trust that God's in control. And so when your past steals your joy, be strong in the strength of the Lord 
And when you feel like you can't make it another day, stand strong in the strength of the Lord. And when you feel like life is stacked against you, be strong in the strength of your Lord. And when temptation comes your way, stand strong in the strength of the Lord. You might be here today and you've made a thousand mistakes and you've made a thousand wrong decisions and you've done a thousand things that you shouldn't have done, but I'm here to tell you today that there is still a pathway for you to be pardoned. There's a pathway for you to get out from underneath that guilt. There's a pathway for you to start anew. There's a pathway for you to be set free here today. And if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you will face him one day as your judge. And so I would say to you today, run to the cross, run to the cross, run to the cross, run to the cross. We need to remain in the presence of a God who saves, remain in the presence of a God who can heal, remain in the presence of a God who can deliver, remain in the presence of a God who can provide, remain in the presence of a God who can overcome. You better power up and wise up and armor up and study up and pray up. And today you better join up with the army of God and get involved in what's going on in our world. We had last weekend 10,000 people listening online. People from Nigeria, Australia, Germany, the Netherlands, Sweden, Switzerland, Jamaica, Indonesia, Ecuador, Colombia, Korea, Sri Lanka, and New Zealand. God will put his Holy Spirit fire within you and our lives will never be the same. And God will purify our hearts and he will transform our lives and he will anoint us and fill us with his very presence. And just like God had a job for Moses, God will have a job for you. You speak to me and whatever God tells you to do and wherever God tells you to go, you get up from your knees and you follow God all the days of your life doing what he's called you to do. Don't change the plan. Follow his instructions and you will be victorious in this life and the life to come. Hey, it's Pastor Dudley from Shepherd Church and Lift Up Jesus. I just want to thank you for listening today. I don't know about you, but anytime the Word of God is preached, the Bible knows what it's talking about when it says it never returns empty. I just want to thank you for being a part of this broadcast in any way, shape, or form. And just want you to know that whenever you give, whenever you pray, whenever you lift this ministry up, we are doing our very best to take the message of Jesus Christ to the entire world. If you've never been a part of our ministry, make sure you go to our website. There's all kinds of resources and information. You make all of this possible. So thank you so much for your generosity. And we will see you here again next time on Lift Up Jesus. God bless you for being here today. The preceding program was sponsored by friends and partners of the Lift Up Jesus ministry.